Women, children and animals are loved unconditionally. Men are loved to the degree that they are useful. It's a phrase I heard. I don't know if it's true, but it certainly feels like it. And that's a big part of why I'm separating from my wife. She just didn't need me anymore. I'll tell you a bit about that. So she's a very conscientious, capable person. She's the kind of person that kind of takes the lead and gets things done before you even know what needs to be done. So it's very easy for me, or for anyone with someone like that, but especially someone like me who's in the habit of being more passive, to just take a back seat and things like booking family holidays, arranging activities. I even let her take charge of the house finances, which I'm not proud of. But I was kind of quite happy to relinquish the responsibility because, again, that's all part of my story is for one reason or another didn't want to or feel I was capable of taking responsibility for things and that's led me to where I am now um, when we met though I was uh, I had my own business and I was earning much more than her and I was uh, I was a leader in some ways and especially the way our relationship was in the beginning you know it's a very exciting time and uh, I obviously offered her something, you know, because we eventually got married. But then her her career started really taking off, and uh, she started earning more money, raising her raising her game. At the same time, I was feeling burnt out and disillusioned with my career, and ended up selling my business and spending a couple of years just taking a couple of locum part time jobs and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And uh, over time, I think her respect for me eroded. You know, she didn't need me financially, for sure. But I think also, in her eyes, my prospects decreased as well, because as time went on, it became less and less obvious that I was going to, you know, really make a a success of myself or even decide what what I was going to do. And in fact, she told me, uh, when, when she told me about a year ago, initially, that she wanted to break up. That's when part of the conversation was, because uh, I'll be honest, I, how she put it? I don't believe in you anymore, which is quite hard to hear, but kind of understandable. I think if it was trying, if she saw me trying more, it would have been different, but I spent a lot of time just not trying, <laughs> just trying to be really indecisive and angsty and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then just over a year ago, uh, we were on holiday in New Zealand together because her parents were staying out there. And I flew back two weeks earlier than she did. She was going to stay for another two weeks. We had a six month old baby at the time. And, uh, I flew back because I had to get to work and that was the day, that was the end of March 2020, that was the day when uh, lockdown happened across the world. The day I flew back, um, her flights uh, got cancelled and she ended up staying out there for another 10 weeks and I had a really grim time. I couldn't even stay in my own house because we were having the house refurbed so I didn't have it, it was a building site so I had to stay in her parents' annex and uh, I had a pretty tough time of it, to be honest. Really missed my family, especially my little baby. And she came back and she told me that, um, well, she didn't want to come back. She was happy out there. She was living in this sort of paradise beach town, being taken care of by her parents, you know, just having to go on walks with a baby every day. That was, that was it, you know. She wasn't looking forward to coming back to me and the only reason she eventually did because her flight get cancelled again and again the only reason she did she says was because she knew i was so upset she didn't want to do that to me anymore so she didn't come back because she wanted us to be together or she wanted thought we should be together as a family she came back um for my sake so the moral of the story is if you're not useful for a long enough period of time she might leave And um, 
there was more to it than that. You know, I'll, I'll cover different things in different videos. There was a couple of incidents where she needed me to step up and take responsibility and I didn't, I let her down and that kind of catalyzed the end. But a big part um, of the breakdown of my relationship was me not taking responsibility. You know, and I've been doing a lot of work on myself um, recently. I've been doing Jordan Peterson's self-authoring program, you know, writing about patterns that have happened in the past and why they keep repeating, where they come from and what you're going to do about it. And um, and I realized that I've had this thing, I, could, I don't really feel comfortable saying it, but um, about wanting to be rescued. You know, maybe I was my parents divorced when I was young. Maybe it's something to do with that. And ultimately, that's got me where I am. You know, so moving forwards, it's all about taking responsibility and doing that in small ways. Taking responsibility for my health, not drinking too much, looking after myself better, taking responsibility for my finances, not burying my head in the sand, being more proactive, being decisive. And, uh, and some of that takes practice, you know, some of it, it doesn't come easy and Sometimes it'll go well for a while and then old habits and old patterns will come back. Um, but I just wanted to share that. And I don't know if you've been through a similar experience, but, you know, my heads up to you would be if you don't take responsibility long enough, uh, you might lose her. <laughs>